Hi, guys. Um, so I'm very honored, uh, and thank you very much to everyone at TOA for, for having me speak here today. It's exciting to be in Berlin. And there's a lot of energy in this place, which is awesome. Uh, so changes in the human-to-human -human interaction paradigm. Um, so that was actually a, a very cute title which the, the guys at TOA gave me to speak about. And I guess there's really two questions. Um, come out of that. One is, like, what, is, what does that mean? And second, why, why should you care? Um, well, what does it mean? Uh, for me, it means what is the, the evolution in communication? Um, and, and second is, why, why is that important? So we've, we've essentially evolved from grunts to language. And I'm going to talk about today how, uh, since then, it's shown that, that uh, language, words, or text are not enough to emo emotionally satisfy humans who are looking for ever richer communication, and how technology has enabled or even driven changes in consumer behavior that bring us closer to the, the natural paradigm of human-to-human -human interaction, which is face-to-face. -face. So then why should you care? Well, you know, communication is kind of a big deal, uh, as this guy, Will Ferrell, thinks he's, he's kind of a big deal. But communication really is kind of a big deal. Why? Because human beings, we're fundamentally gregarious. So we always want to congregate. And we always want to interact with each other and share, share moments uh, and experiences and communicate. And uh, it's actually the biggest market uh, on the planet, communication. Um, more than 60 billion messages get sent every single day, which is pretty huge. And where, where is all this happening? Uh, it's happening really on social networks and social messaging apps. And, and, and what this graph shows is that um, in 2016, social messaging apps overtook social networks uh, as the primary means of, of communication. So that's you know, WhatsApp and WeChat uh, and Facebook Messenger uh, and Snapchat. And uh, actually, what's interesting about that is that 70% uh, of those messages are now getting sent in groups uh, and uh, on, on WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger. And that's why Mark Zuckerberg went ahead and bought uh, WhatsApp, because he saw this trend happening. What you might not have known is that over 50% of that communication now is some kind of visual or audiovisual communication. So emojis, stickers, GIFs, or, or, or clips. Uh, so, we, so we really started with, with grunts. Right? And <clears throat> we evolved that into language. And actually, our brains were, were smaller than those of the Neanderthals. Right? But because we were able to evolve from grunts to language, we created culture and civilization, and we were able to better organize ourselves. So with the result that we're here today and they're not. So <clears throat> it, like the original human-to-human -human interaction paradigm was face-to-face -face in real life. And that's the richest form of communication, right? Because you get to engage all five senses, right? Sight, uh, smell, um, uh, taste, touch. So this guy here, right, you can, you know, he's been touched by that guy, and you can, you can be sure he got the message. Today, it's more likely to be on mobile, obviously, right? And, and what is language? Like, language is essentially the curation of a set of highly sophisticated symbols or, or, or words. And, ooh. Got a bit of a clicker issue, guys. Oh, there we go, okay. And actually, it can be pretty evocative, right? This guy here, Charles Dickens, he knew how to be pretty evocative with, with language. <clears throat> but it would generally take him 700 pages of very flowery descriptions, right? And so sometimes words or text is not the most efficient way to actually communicate. <clears throat> so whenever, it's funny, because whenever humans are faced with a problem, we, we find hacks, right, to, to create a solution. So the emoticon is the original, like, hack for this, um, which actually happened in... in uh, like 1982, so where <clears throat> clearly text was not emotionally satisfying enough the, uh, as a medium, and so we had to find a way to convey more emotion. So we used these, and actually the first documented guy was Scott Falman, 
at uh, the Carnegie Mellon uh, Institute was studying computer science, but actually, apparently, right back into, from Abraham Lincoln text in 1862, there was the first use of kind of emoticons. And then emojis, which everyone knows today. <clears throat> These guys were invented by Shigetaka Kurita. Um, <laughs> In, uh, in, in Japan in the 90s for a telco network called Docomo. And that was because uh, they had, were uh, operating on this device called the Pocket Bell, and it had a, a limitation of 250 characters. And they felt that it, it, it was not possible to properly express yourself in an emotionally satisfying way in 250 characters with, with language. So they created this, this set of symbols that would help achieve that. And this is the first heart emoji. And what's interesting about that is that uh, Docomo decided to move to a more of a business use. And they dropped the heart emoji. And there was such an outcry among all the young users of this that they all, all abandoned Docomo for another telco, uh, simply because they dropped this, this heart emoji and the, the youngsters loved it so much. So Shigetaka knew he was onto something w with this. Now, of course, emojis are everywhere since Apple uh, uh, adopted it in iOS 5 into the iPhone as, as a natural language. So now you've got huge adoption. And this is the most popular emoji on the planet, as you probably know. It's the laughing emoji. So that's bringing you smiling and happiness. And we'll kind of get onto why that's important later. Um, this guy, the poop emoji, um, fun fact, out of a, a survey of 100,000 millennials, the Poop emoji is the one that they most identified with as describing how they felt about themselves. Basically, <laughs> I'm shit, but I'm happy. Um, so what's interesting is, is that uh, emoji stayed a Japanese phenomenon for a long time, right? So they were only in Japan. And they're controlled by this thing called the Unicode Consortium, and they still are today. And it's a not-for-profit, and it regulates what emoji get put into the official emoji set. And it takes a really long frickin' time to, to actually get in there. So an enterprising um, uh, messaging company in Japan called Line, who you might have heard of, which is like the WhatsApp of Japan, they developed their own hack. And their hack was to say, right, they love these emoji, but they want more of them. And it takes way too long with this Unicode consortium, so let's just develop our own emoji. You know what? We'll call them stickers. So they create these stickers, and they're static stickers. And uh, now they make $300 million a year selling packs of these things. And then they're like, what if you could animate them? They'd be even more uh, emotionally charged. So now you have animated stickers. Then the GIF, right? That's this guy, Steve Willite. So this guy invented the GIF, pronounced GIF, as he would tell you, back in 1987, which stands for Graphical Interchange Format. <clears throat> and it wasn't originally used for communication. It was actually originally just out of the desire to take a, a static image and, and turn it into a moving image on websites and forums and stuff. Uh, and of course, it was like hard to create a GIF and like super hard to ever share one. So like basically, no one's doing it, right? Now, 40 odd years later, um, there are billions of them getting sent because the tools, technology has enabled us to, to send those super easily. So what comes next after GIFs, right? What's the one thing missing there? What about sound? You know, sound's an important way of, of communicating. What about this? Ooh. <laughs> All right, that's like pretty much most of the room, right? It's the lightsaber sound from Star Wars, yeah? So here we are in Berlin, like 95% of everyone understands immediately what that is. I mean, everyone in, in Beijing to Sao Paulo will know exactly what that is, right? It's become iconic, it's part of pop culture. How about this? Yeah, okay, it's about 50, 60%, that's Super Mario. What about if you add music? comes from. Wait, this could get even easier. Okay, put your hand up if you know what this is. Okay, yeah, okay, that's pretty, yeah, yeah, exactly, right? So, so arguably music, sound is, is 
a super important component to, to, to add to this, right? It's one of our important five senses, and music is, uh, is, is super evocative. Actually, Pythagoras said, it's actually the, the, it's, it's the language of emotion, and Pythagoras actually said that um, the, the, uh, the universe is built on harmonies, and the same mathematical patterns underlie the uh, scales and, and the, I the intervals that are most pleasing to the human ear as underlie the, the uh, probability waves in quantum theory. But wait, and why is all this happening? So why this big surge in audiovisual content? Well, first of all, it allows us to be more concise, right? So there's expression, a picture is worth a thousand words, right? Because what the, this is the notion that a picture, um, a s single image, can convey a very complex idea very efficiently, or, at least, or the essence of that idea. So what does that mean? A GIF, is that worth, worth 10,000 words? And what about a video? Is that 100,000 words? Well, let's have a look. Here's a static image <coughs> of a cat boxing. Now you've got movement. And how about some sound? I get a lot of, see a lot of smiles and stuff in the audience, right? It's more fun. It's much more entertaining. Uh, yes. yes? Yes! Yes! <laughs> right? And so what does that do, right? So smiling, um, which is a natural part of laughter, is across all cultures is a uh, sign of happiness. And when you smile, your brain releases uh, <clears throat> dopamine, which is a neurotransmitter, which, which is a thing that causes happiness. And actually, it works both way around. So the release of dopamine causes you to smile and laugh. And when you smile and laugh, it causes dopamine. So actually, when you're, when you're starting to share this kind of audiovisual content, you're literally delivering dopamine hits to your friends and making them happy, right? And happiness is pretty important. I mean, the UN General Assembly officially recognized the pursuit of happiness as a fundamental human goal in 2012. So a graph look, might look something like this. So on the y-axis, you've got the richness of communication. On the x-axis, you have time. And you see how technology is enabling us to drive towards richer and richer ways to communicate, getting us closer to the original interaction paradigm of face-to-face. -face. Then, of course, you have attention span, right? TMI stands for too much information. The amount of information getting published in the world is growing at an exponential rate. But our time in the day to make sense of it all is a flat line. So that means you end up like this guy with a very short attention span, and you want to capture everything. You want to understand everything that's going on, all the important things that are happening in popular culture, right? So here, I'm not going to spend three hours watching the Oscars, maybe, but I definitely want, if someone shares with me the gif of uh, uh, J-Law having her classic like Oscar fail moment and the three other moments from that thing, that's a great way to me to consume it. Because what I do have is lots of little gaps in the day, right? I've got like a few seconds here, a few minutes here, and I've got hundreds of those while I'm waiting. And I always have my mobile with me, so I can consume this stuff in snackable in a kind of snackable form and share it. And, and that's true for everything, right? So like, essentially, Facebook and Instagram are like the highlights reel of your friends' lives, right? You're watching now four-minute shows on Snapchat. You have trailers for trailers, TLDW, too long I didn't watch. So this is all tech-enabled or tech-driven, right? Massive mobile penetration, 4.77 billion mobile phones in the world, three, four, 5G networks, and cheap data plans is all driving this stuff or enabling it. So tech advancements and too much information is driving these new behaviors. And that means that pop culture is also becoming a remix culture, right? So my favorite one at the end there, one does not simply give a ninja a hand job. Amazing, that guy. So what's important about remixing, which is sampling and mashups and those kind of things, is that the most important cultural works are, are the most powerful and we remix the most. Hello, These are a couple of my favorites. Another one, this, when you add text. Zapatero. What do you think of the government of Zapatero? Right. That one I like, too. Um, so essentially what's happening here is entertainment and communication are merging, right? And that creates more emotion, right? That's the big heart there. So on the left, that's one way to communicate. What are you doing today? I'm working. You get a response like that, okay. On the right, what are you doing today? And then I get the laughing emoji back, right? So is this entertainment or is it communication? 
guess what? I love you, I love you, I love you! And the thing is, you know, Will Farrell's a pretty talented guy, and actors and artists, like, their day job is to communicate emotion, right? So they're better than us. So actually, they can act as our proxies when we adopt them and incorporate this into our, our communication. So the win, like the winning formula, the win would look like this. The win equals entertainment divided by time spent. Or like, what, that's what we look at. What is the lull per second of this thing you can get, right? Because that's the, how much dopamine you can give to yourself and your friends in the shortest amount of time. Right? And the future, where are we going to go? Right? You've got augmented reality on platforms like Snapchat, which is essentially taking mixed media and lenses and things and adding it to your physical presence. You've got virtual reality, right? Which virtual reality is, right, is, is a uh, fake world that seems authentic. So you can imagine that communication paradigm in there is going to be, is going to be pretty rich. Um, or maybe we'll just beam emotions and thoughts and experiences to each other through our cerebral cortex, right? That's what Elon Musk with Neuralink would, would, would have you believe. Um, and I'm sort of out of time, so I'm going to conclude here to just say that what I want to really show here was that, you know, the, the, this evolution, the human-to-human -human paradigm and technology has enabled us to get closer to that rich in real life uh, experience, but to do it from afar. Um, and what tech has also enabled us to do is to bring in these pop culture uh, references and bring popular culture into that communication to make it more fun and more entertaining, which means you can deliver more dopamine to yourself and your friends, which makes everyone happier. And that's what we want to do, make everyone happy. So Let's I'll just say... So I'll see you guys all Come in the bar in. later. I think that's me. So, and also download Tumoji and get some of your own. Okay, thanks guys. Everyone give a hand clap.